Out of the Woods, a true story of an unforgettable event by Rebecca Bond. Antonio Willie Giroux lived in Ontario, Canada, in the town of Galganda, on the edge of Galganda Lake, in a hotel his mother ran. It was not a fancy place in 1914, but it was big, three stories tall. There weren't many children to play with, so Antonio made friends with the hotel workers. He knew the daily routines of the cooks, the maids, and the hired men who stoked the stoves and maintained the building. The ground floor of the hotel had a large open space for eating with the kitchen at one end. Antonio slept in a room off the kitchen that had once been a pantry. The second floor had rooms for travelers passing through and outdoor sportsmen who would stay for a few days to fish or hunt. Antonio liked to peek into these rooms when the doors were open, even though they had warm, dry beds and woolen blankets like his own, these rooms were much more interesting. They also had the guests' canvas travel bags with many pockets, nets and poles for fishing, and sometimes even guns. But the top floor was Antonio's favorite, one great room lined with rows of bunk beds it was here where the men who worked in the forest, trappers, lumberjacks, and silver miners, lived for months at a time. Here it smelled wonderful, of sweet tobacco and wood, wool and leather, and sweat. Here Antonio could listen to French and English and Native American languages, sometimes all spoken at once. And up here in the evenings, the men played cards and made music, told boisterous stories, and laughed. Antonio loved how the top floor of the hotel was very noisy until the lanterns were blown out and everyone fell asleep. Only then did it become so quiet that he could hear the fur bows brushing against the window panes. Surrounding the hotel was a dense forest, mostly cedar, pine, balsam, and poplar trees. When Antonio walked through the forest, he heard the bay of wolves getting ready to chase deer, saw the tracks of foxes hunting mice, and noticed the signs of bear, moose, and weasel. Fur rubbed off on bark, a sleeping impression in the earth, a hollow log lined with dry grass. These half glimpses were never enough for Antonio, but he also knew that in Galganda, with its trappers, hunters, and lumberjacks who made tall trees crash to the ground, the safest place for the animals was a distant, hidden one. When Antonio was almost five, the summer was so dry, the green carpets of moss yellowed, the silky grass crisped, and the pine needles on the trees turned brittle. One day, a miner on the third floor spotted smoke in the hills and sounded the alarm. Antonio knew they were all in real danger. The news spread fast. The fire spread faster. Antonio watched as the wind pushed the fire in every direction. He heard it roar like a monster and crackle with white lightning heat. Soon, there was only one place to go. All the people of Galganda, hotel guests, trappers, lumberjacks, silver miners, cooks, Maids, hired men, Antonio's mother, and Antonio went into the lake. 
There was even a baby, not half a year old, held in his mother's arms. They stood in the water up to their knees, their waists, their shoulders, and stared as the fire came closer and closer. And then, through the smoke and flames, Antonio saw something remarkable. Out of the forest and into the lake came foxes and rabbits, bobcats and raccoons. Wolves appeared and deer and moose, porcupines and elk, squirrels and possums, even some bears. Antonio watched as all the animals came out of the thickets and down from the treetops and stood in Galganda Lake as the forest around them burned. Wolves stood beside deer, foxes beside rabbits, and people and moose stood close enough to touch. Antonio didn't know how long everyone stood there, but it felt like several days. The fierce fire and smoke made the sky so black, no one could tell whether it was day or night. Antonio smelled the steam rising off the animal's wet fur, saw their chests lifting and falling in steady rhythm, and felt their hot animal breath. Finally, the monster stopped roaring. The red flames blew themselves out. The black sky turned charcoal gray, heather gray, and then almost blue. It was safe at last to leave the lake. Antonio went back to sleeping in the room next to the kitchen. Hotel guests still had rooms on the second floor with warm, dry beds and woolen blankets. The trappers and lumberjacks and miners returned to their bunks on the third floor. Antonio continued to live in Galganda for the next 10 years of his life. He stayed friends with the cooks, the maids, and the hired men. He listened to the stories told by the lumberjacks and sometimes he went fishing with the fishermen. He swam in the cold lake. But Antonio never forgot the fire or the people up to their waists in water. Mostly, he never forgot how he had watched that distance between animals and people disappear in the summer of 1914 when he was almost five years old. Comprehension Questions Number one, the author says that Antonio could hear French, English, and Native American languages. What does this tell you about the people who stayed in the hotel? Number two, were the people and animals scared of each other as they stood in the lake? Why do you think this was so? Number three, how did the distance between animals and people disappear in the summer of 1914? Explain using details from the text. Cause and effect. The cause is something that happens. The effect is what happens because of the cause. Remember, clue words such as like, since, because, if, then, and so, let a reader know. Read aloud page four. What clue word shows a cause and effect? What caused Antonio to make friends with the hotel workers? 